Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make the inside and outside of my underwater shark house and I shouldn't have to tell you guys that if you want to follow this video along you really should have the shark house built that is the big giant shark head that you might be able to see on the screen in front of you if you don't have it built, good news, all you have to do is head to either the guard system or the description below and you'll find a link to a video that will show you how to make it honestly, it will probably take you less than half an hour to get this thing built it isn't a as complicated as it looks and it looks awesome even without the inside and outside done but once you have got that completed you can come back to this video and we can crack on because let me tell you guys this is probably the coolest inside and outside of a house that I have ever made it's absolutely awesome and I have not done anything which looks like this before it is going to look fantastic so if you do want to make the inside and outside remember that the link to the actual original shark tutorial is in both the card system and in the description below this is what you're going to need to progress things along so first of all we're going to have to actually make the part of the shark which is underwater which is going to contain most of the living space so to make this we're going to need some magenta stained clay we'll want to grab ourselves some glowstone We'll also want some sea lanterns. We'll also want some never brick fence. We also need to grab some grey stained glass. That's quite important, the grey stained glass. We will also need, a little bit later on, we'll need some stuff like never brick. And we'll need never brick stairs. And we'll also need some never brick slabs. And I think that we might be good for now, I think. So, uh, you know, something that we can actually do first of all is you can see the shark's mouth how it's a little bit dull looking well if you want to take the top teeth and with your glowstone if you just want to place a glowstone like inside of the mouth just behind the teeth um, you might find that it lights it up a little bit and it makes it look a little bit more appealing it just makes it look a little bit nicer that's just a very quick thing that we can do right now before I forget later on but let's talk about the actual like underground layer of the shark and I know that this is actually hard to see so I'll tell you what I'll um, I'll throw some glowstone um, around the like the floor of where we're going to be building this round and this will only help us later on as well so let's just light this up a little bit I'm throwing loads of it around loads of this around just so that we can see because that's the most important thing so, what we want to do is we want to, with our grey stained glass, we want to trace along the outside of the under part of the shark. So, can you see here where we have, like, the edges of the shark? We want to do rows of six grey stained glass that come down from the edges of the shark. So, for instance, like, the side part, we want to come down by... It's actually this block right here, um, where we have this, like, grey. We want to come down by one, two, three, four five, six. And then we want to place a glowstone underneath it, by the way, but we can do all that later. And we want to do this going all the way around the shark. So we want to trace along around the outside of the shark. And we just want to follow the shape. And we just place the glass here. We just want to follow the shape of the outer part of the shark. And we just want to have a row of six great glass coming down from the outer layer of the shark. And we're going to have to, have to maneuver around a little bit. Bit because remember we are underwater this is going to be a little bit tricky but it's definitely going to be worth it in the end and you may find that when you come to certain parts of the shark you may find when you come to certain parts of the shark guys that you can't come down by one two three four five you can only come down by five but you'll have to destroy whatever's in the way and you do want to have your row of six so um, we want to do this coming all the way down from the very edges of the shark and we do want to make sure that nothing gets in the way so destroy any obstacle that's in the way because we don't want we can't really like change the shape of the underground layer component of this we want to keep it very much uh, very much the same and I'm just going to delete quite a bit of uh, sand that we have back here just to make it a little bit easier but remember that what we want to do is we want to have our rows of six glass coming all the way down from the edges of the shark and if you place glowstone as you go around it'll actually only help you the lighter the area is um, the easier it actually gets like the more you can see obviously the easier things get and um, we've also got to get this block down so we just want to go all the way around the edge of the shark and we're having we're going to have to destroy that as well 
well. All the way around the edge of the shock, we'll probably have to delete some of this. I, I didn't anticipate all of this. I probably should have built it in a less built-up area, but you do want to be able to build your shock wherever, so this is probably a good example for, you know, you've got to do quite a bit of landscaping in some of these cases. You've got to do quite a bit of landscaping. So this is what you want to do, guys. I'm not going to do this all in the tutorial with you. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to extend down all of the very edges of the shark and remember it's by six with your gray stained glass you've got to probably destroy some blocks in the way unless you're very very lucky and also place glowstone underneath those six blocks so i'm going to get cracking with this because it's going to take quite a while this is one of the longer parts of this and i'll be back once i've completed it for myself and we can take a bit of a look at this thing we're already cracking on we're about a third of the way done okay so as you might be able to see and i think that this is probably the best way to show you i have now done all of the glass surrounding the outer parts of the shark they're all raised down by six and i have the layer of glowstone underneath them as well what we then have to do is we have to do a layer of magenta stained clay or any material of choice really just something that you can actually place blocks on top of like most blocks i know that some blocks aren't as reactive as others like you can't do a lot of stuff with glowstone and there's uh, there's glass that you really can't do stuff with so I figured that I'd probably use, like, uh, magenta stained clay, just because it kind of, like, fits the narrative of, like, you're still, like, in the belly of the shark, and having magenta stained clay down here just kind of, like, it, it just fits. It kind of looks cool as well. But you can use whatever material you want. But you do want to fill in the very bottom of this. Just connect all of the glowstone together, left and right. You do want to fill in this. And I'll be back in just a second once I've done it for myself. Okay, so we now have this magenta stained clay platform platform right at the base of our shark. This is actually where all of the living space is going to be. It's going to be down here. We have a problem, don't we? It's filled with water. Well, how do we get rid of the water? You may have your very own methods. I did a little bit of research into this, and I found that sponge is the easiest way for me to get rid of it, but I know that there's a few other methods as well. So I'm going to place a layer of sponge going all the way around the top of this, and this does get a little bit tricky because, of course, like as, as you place more more and more sponge like the your vision starts getting distorted and stuff but i'm placing a layer of sponge all the way at the all the way around the top of this i'm just going to go all the way around the top and then i'm going to do the same at the bottom like i'm going to go to the bottom of the shot and i'm just going to then do like the same thing i'm going to go all the way around the bottom of it with the sponge and then i'm just going to see what is left because there probably won't be a massive amount um i know that the sponge is it's it is a pretty fast method, but I know that there's I know that there's other ways to do it. So you know, just whatever way you think will be fastest for you, then do that. But I I think that this is a pretty pretty fast method. And then what we're also going to do is we're just going to do like a strip of sponge going all the way up the center here, and we're just going to basically keep adding it. See, we just uh, we just got the majority of it then, and I'm also going to place a strip here down at the bottom, and we're just going to isolate the parts. Where, okay, so, oh, have we got rid of all of it? No, we haven't. So we're just going to have to add some, like, here, here, a little bit here, and here. That should get some of it. And then we have some down at the bottom. So here, here, I would say, about here. Uh, there's a little bit more. Yep, okay, so how about here? Um, there's also some here as well. You guys get the point. So I'm going to finish sponging this area. And uh, I've actually I've, I've actually just finished sponging this area. It's now completely empty. And we do have quite a bit of wet sponge. So I'll tell you what. I'm not going to make you suffer through me deleting all of this. I'm going to be back in just a second once I've deleted all of this. But sponge is a pretty fast method, I'd say. About two minutes plus destroying it. Not too bad. So there we go, guys. We now have the room that we're actually going to be able to live in cleared out that is all of the water gone we're surrounded by water down here it's actually quite peaceful you can actually see a little bit of a glimpse of the outside world looking great 
So, what do we do once we have actually cleared this room out? And obviously, pause this at any point that you feel necessary that you're still working on this. So, we're actually going to have to break back into the uh, the actual head of the shark. And this is a pretty decent place to come up. I'm just going to replace the floor there. Alright, so let's talk about the fountain that we have inside of our shark. We have one layer up here, and we have one layer down there. It is a two-story fountain, and it looks absolutely fantastic. So... Assuming that the floor of the shark is filled in with magenta, like as soon as you walk in, and it should be, by the way, I'm pretty sure that I did it at the end of the shark house tutorial, I'm pretty sure that I filled the very bottom of this in with magenta, but if it isn't, fill it in with magenta, it's kind of important. Well, what you want to do is where you have the entrance to the shark, which is right here, you want to, from this block, can you see just out of the back of the entrance, we want to count in by three from this block. So not counting this one, we want to come in by one, two, three. On top of this block, we want to place a never brick slab. And then we want to go left of the slab by one with your slab. Do two up left diagonals as if you're looking down. One, two. Up by two. Two up right diagonals. One, two. Right by two. Two bottom right diagonals. That's one and two. Down by two, bottom left diagonal, another bottom left diagonal to connect back to where you first started. So we now have a circular shape. Destroy the center of this circular shape, and you just want it to be completely empty. So just destroy the center part of that. What you can then do is destroy underneath each one of the slabs. So just destroy underneath each one of the slabs. And we're going to be placing sea lanterns underneath those slabs just to provide a little bit of light. It's also going to make the fountain look fantastic. Is that every single one of them? I do believe it is. So you can see it provides a little bit of light to this upper area and it makes it look quite lovely. What we also want to have in this upper area is we just want to randomly, and I'd suggest about four of these, I would say, about four of these, like two on the front and two on the back. You can have more, no one's stopping you. Um, do from the ceiling, like, never brick fence, and underneath the fence, place sea lanterns, and you might want to place these at, like, different altitudes, like, you might want to make this one a little bit shorter, you might want to place this one... Place them a little bit randomly, is basically what I'm telling you, because it'll it'll make it look a little bit better, and um, you might want to have them all hanging down, like down low, you might want to place one here. I'd suggest about four of them, as I've said a couple of times already, I'd suggest about four, and I, uh, I think that that actually looks kind of cool, so as you enter, it's just a little bit mysterious, it's a little bit mystic, I quite like that, I'm a fan. What you also want to do, and this is a little bit tricky here, so... You know what, we'll actually focus on the fountain later. What we also want to do is, in the front corners of the room that we have here, we want to destroy, let's say, the four corner blocks coming towards the back of the shark. So let's say, like, one, two, three, four, like, coming towards the front of the shark. And what we also want to do is we want to, like, starting from this space here, like, the very corner block that we destroyed, we want to place a never brick stairs. And then we just want to, like, taper our stairs down until we eventually reach the ground floor of the shark house. So can you see what I'm talking about? We just want to place some stairs. And underneath those stairs, if you like, just to make them look a little bit more interesting, you may place some upside down never brick stairs. And we just, of course, want to have enough room to maneuver up and down these stairs. So that's that side done. And then coming to the subset side, we want to place the stairs there. And then we want to place them just tapering down. As stairs do, we just want them to come all the way down to the ground floor like that. And I'm just going to do the upside down layer of never brick stairs. And it'll end up looking a lot something like that. That's quite nice. Can we walk up and down these? Can we? Have we got enough room? We have, lovely. And what you might also want to do is get rid of the sponge and grab um, grab some sort of glass. I mean, white stained glass pane works, but you might also want to use, like, maybe maybe a fun glass. Maybe, like, pink stained glass pane, something like that. Maybe just to lighten things up a bit. But just place them around the two, uh, around the two staircases because it looks cool. And that is almost everything that you need to do up here. We do have one last thing to do up here, but we'll be taking care of that later on, to be honest. We'll be taking care of that later later on. So, let's come down to the downstairs, and we can just come down to the fountain, actually. We can just jump down here. 
We have a couple of things down here. The first thing that we're going to take care of is the bed. So, let's get rid of everything. Just get rid of all of your materials. Grab yourself some uh, dark oak wood planks. We'll need some virtual planks. We'll need some uh, virtual stairs. We'll also need dark oak wood stairs. Uh, we'll need the slabs as well to match more than likely. Virtual wood slab and dark oak wood slab. Um, we'll need, since it is a bed, we'll need a bed. <laughs> and we'll also need some, uh, like, beacons. And we'll also need, where are you? We'll need some neverbrook fence. So, Right at the very front of the room, so can you see the pier here? That's where, you, that's how you know, like, where you are, and of course the stairs are facing a particular way. Well, right against this back wall, we have a bed, and we want to, from these three center blocks here, we want to place, like, um, three dark oak wood planks like this. And then on top of those dark oak wood planks, we want to place upside down birch wood stairs. Then extend those end two oak wood planks towards us by one of the dark oak wood planks, then by one with the dark oak wood stairs, connect them together at the bottom with birch wood stairs, and then throw a bed in between that, like this. And that's a pretty fancy, nice looking bed. Then either side of the bed, and this just wants to be um, in this position, right here. And in this position, we want to have two little cabinets, basically. And we want to have beacons sat on top of those cabinets like this. And I don't know, they just they just look like lights and they just look not quite nice and fancy, basically. Then we can get rid of the beacons. Um, we can grab some buttons if we just want to make them look a little bit more interesting. We can make the cabinets look a little bit more interesting. And um, that's pretty much all the buttons do. And then we can throw the buttons away and we can grab ourselves some sea lanterns. So what we then want to do, above the bed, and we want to be like in this row right here so we want to be like above the middle part of the bed attached to the glass we want to be on top of the second glass and we want to extend it forward by one two three with the fence and then place a sea lantern underneath that and you know how you have those fish that have those lights on their head well that's kind of like what that's inspired by and i think that that's a pretty cool looking Pretty cool looking bed to be honest, it's a nice little bit of a theme bed and if you wanted to obviously you can build the bed up a little bit, you could add um, you could add some more, well we can't because the cabinets are there, but um, we can destroy the buttons. Um, you can add a nice little bit more of uh, a, a few more like um, slabs going around it if you want and since I just destroyed a button because I'm a bit silly, uh, we don't need beds anymore. Um, you can like build the bed up a little bit, you can make it look a little bit nicer or you can get rid of it or you know what I mean, um, you could add a little bit of variation to it. Uh, you could do whatever you want. However you want the bed to look, it's kind of up to you. Um, just keep tampering with it until you like it. And I think that that looks alright, to be honest with you guys. Well, once you've got the little bed taken care of, we now have to take care of the TV that we have in front of the bed. I decided to place a TV down here. Uh, to make this, we're going to need to get rid of uh, sea lanterns for a little bit, and we need to get rid of the Neverbrook fence a little bit. Um, we'll want to grab ourselves some black wool, and we'll also need some, uh, some red carpet. So, in front of the bed, we want to leave a gap of one, and we want to do a row of red carpet that is equal in length to the bed. And then we want to extend it left and right by two, that's one, two, and then that'll be one, two. Add another layer of red carpet directly in front of that, so can you see what I'm doing? That's what we want to have. Then starting from this left hand side of the carpet, we want to leave a gap of one, and coming forward we want to place a dark oak wood plank, then go right by seven with the upside down birchwood stairs. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we want to place a dark oak wood plank. What we can then do is a layer of dark oak wood planks directly behind everything that we've just made. Place a black wool on the dark oak wood planks at the left and right side. And we want to have a row of seven black wool right in the center and that's basically just like starting from the left hand side we skip one and then one two three four five i said seven but i meant five i apologize we want to have a row of five so that'll be one two three four five we then want to take this very left hand black wool and we want to raise it up by three that's one uh two and that'll be three then take it to the right connect it down to the opposite side and what we then want to do is behind the tv we just want to do a layer of black wall that equals the height of the tv so we just want to have like a nice square of black and we want to do buttons on the bottom corners of the tv we also want to do buttons in front of each one of those black walls we can then get rid of the black wall the buttons all of that and we can grab ourselves some cyan stained clay and we can just fill in the center of the screen with cyan stained clay and uh, we have like this half of the house complete now so we have 
have a bed, we have a nice bit of a TV. I think that it's kind of a cool thing to have like a TV and a bed, a nice little bit of a seating area in the belly of a shark. Well, what we now want to do is we want to come behind the TV and we need a whole host. You know what? We won't do this part now because um, it will be better suited for us if we do the other part first. So coming to the very opposite end of the shark here, we want to come to the very opposite end of the shark. And can you see where we have like this row of, I think this is about seven magenta stained clay. And on top of this row of seven magenta stained clay, we want to place a dark oak wood planks on the ends. Then we want to do virtual planks in between or birchwood stairs in between. We then want to raise out the corners of the birchwood stairs each by one, so we make kind of like a U-shaped sofa. Then we want to place dark oak wood planks left and right of that sofa. We then want to take out our bookcases, which we haven't used before yet. We want to take out our bookcases, and we just want to place bookshelves, bookshelves, I apologize, bookshelves on top of those corner dark oak wood plank blocks right at the back. And then we want to connect them together top block to top block, so kind of like on top of them actually, with our dark oak wood slabs. And this makes kind of like a pretty cool like seating area slash little bit of a reading area. I think it's kind of cool. And I'm just going to get rid of all the materials. I'm going to grab flower pots and what's a cool flower to have down here? Like uh, oxide daisies kind of cool. So we can just have some flower pots and some daisies like on the edge of the little sofa there. And I think that that's actually a really cool looking sofa. And I've not seen anything um, made quite like that before, by the way. Um, so nice little bit of a sofa area. What is the last thing that we have to do down here? So other than lighting, the last structure that we're going to be building down here is, um, is the fountain. So come to the very back of the TV. In line with the back of the TV here, and we're going to need more materials, aren't we? We'll want to grab uh, uh, Neverick Slabs. We'll want to grab um, uh, Neverick Stairs. We'll also need some Sea Lanterns, guys, if I can ever find them. We'll need to grab ourselves some Sea Lanterns. We'll need some Neverbrick Fence, I assume. We'll also need some White Stained Glass Pane. And... I was thinking about grabbing some lily pads as well, but I don't think that I'll, that will actually fit. So I think that we actually have just about everything we need here. So, you know, I just found a better way to explain this. So coming to the sofa area here, we want to, inside the sofa, you can see how we have these three magenta stained clay blocks. Well, moving forward and leaving a gap of one, two... Three. So we want to be on the fourth row. So this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row. We want to knock out the three center blocks at the bottom of the shot. Can you see what I'm talking about? So in line with the three center blocks of the sofa, we want to move on on the fourth row. We want to have this. Well, we want to knock out those blocks, replace them with sea lanterns. Take the left hand block here and looking forwards towards where the front of the shark is, we want to take this left block, looking down, do two up left diagonals in the floor, knock out the two blocks above, do two up right diagonals, knock out the two blocks going right, do two bottom right diagonals, knock out the two blocks below, do a bottom left diagonal, connect everything together. What you then want to do is just fill in the area with sea lanterns. So just fill in the area with sea lanterns like that. What you then want to do is you want to go all the way around the outside of your sea lanterns with your never brick fence, and with your never brick stairs, I should say. And it just wants to... It, it just wants to form kind of like a circular shape with your never brick stairs and it'll look kind of cool so we just want to have something which should look a, uh, a little bit like let me see here a little bit like this so we have kind of like a really cool plus shape or I guess it does kind of look like a plus or like a circular shape and what we then want to do is we want to Find the center of it. No, first of all, we'll just uh, place white stained glass pane all the way around the outside of the fountain. And I do want to note something. I'm a little embarrassed about this, unfortunately, but this fountain for me isn't placed properly because the shark is supposed to be one row bigger this isn't my original shark this is a shark that i quickly made um for this tutorial and i do believe that the shark is actually one row smaller than it should be because this should fit and this should like be one row forwards really so Really, honestly, it should look a... Imagine... I mean, you guys know what the TV looks like. So, it should actually end up looking a little bit more like this 
from the back of the fountain so you can actually walk around it. This doesn't affect you because assuming you built the shark properly, this it'll fit and everything will look fine. It doesn't change anything. But for me, because the shark was very quickly put together, I do believe that I've made it a little bit smaller. But it's okay, it only affects me. And what we want to do, you see in the floor, we want to raise up those sea lanterns by one row. So just raise up those sea lanterns by one row so they are equal with the uh, equal with the never brick stairs surrounding them and what we then want to do is we want to find the middle block of the fountain and we want to trace it up and you can use a block for this like use magenta stain clay you want to trace it up and you want to raise it all the way up into the second level of the shark and you can see how it touches this dark gray wall block diagonally we want to with our uh, never brick fence we actually want to raise this out by one block with the no, actually, what we'll do is we'll take this dark grey wool block here, we'll connect it to that top magenta stained clay with the never brick. And then what we want to do is we want to place, knock out the magenta block. We want to replace that magenta block with a glowstone. So you can see that we now have like a glowstone sat on top here. And what we then want to do is we want to, with our never brick stairs, we want to do upside down never brick stairs going all the way around the glowstone. So we kind of have like a, it's going to look a little bit like a shower head, to be honest. And we can just replace that fence actually with a never brick, uh, with a never brick um, stair. And then we can kind of like just place a never brick fence at the top just to kind of connect it. What we're then going to do is destroy all of the magenta stained clay. And can you see the point of that, guys? We've raised this up until it's on the second floor floor and we've just found the center of the fountain and we've just made like a fancy looking shower head or something a, a place for the water to come from and it's important that we retain the position and we've done that with the glowstone and what we're now going to do is we're going to do a block of water coming down from that glowstone and it's going to form a fountain it's going to come from the top here it's going to roam all the way down to the bottom and what we're also going to do um at the bottom of the fountain we're just going to do a plush shape of sea lanterns right at the bottom of the fountain and we just want to end up having something that should look a little bit like this so kind of like in the four corners of the water we just want to have a uh, a little bit of a sea lantern formation it actually looks quite nice doesn't it doesn't that look fantastic and um, that is actually the entire interior of the shop done and i think it looks absolutely awesome down here so we have the bed we have the tv we have the fountain we have a nice little bit of a sofa area which you can look at your really cool fountain whip. Um, up here it's pretty much just a nice little bit of an entrance way. Oh, something that you can do now that I've been reminded. Um, you can add additional lights down here. So... Can you remember the lights that we have like upstairs, like the never brick fence and like the sea lanterns and stuff? Add some of those downstairs. Add them at uh, like different heights. Like have them just like hanging down by one and have them like hanging down by two and have them hanging down by three and stuff. Like have them at different heights. Don't add too many. Maybe just like two on one end and two on the, whoops, uh, two on one end and two on the other. And it'll look great. It'll definitely go with the decor. It will lighten things up even more and it'll look fantastic. I think this looks absolutely awesome awesome the, outs the downstairs of here I think it looks perfect and if you want to just come and look outside of the shark um, you can see like you can actually see it from the outside. You can actually see the entire area. So it looks great. Let's talk about the last thing on my mind. So the last thing that we can do for the shark. Um, that's the inside completely done. The outside won't take us long at all. So for the outside, we're going to need... Uh, we'll need some dirt. I think we need dirt for this, if I'm not mistaken. We'll need some uh, jungle tree saplings. We'll need some uh, bone meal. We'll also want to grab something to make like a little bit of a fire with, like uh, I'll use uh, dark oak wood stairs as long as they don't burn. I'll also use like uh, never rack. I'll also want to grab myself some uh, flint and steel. And I might also grab a diamond shovel as well. So what I want to have around the area, I want to have where this pier is just in front of it and not too far in front of in front of it mind i don't want it to be too far in front of it i want to have a little bit of a fire as if as if a survivor has been living here and 
uh, as if he's just like living on the beach or something like that. Uh, you might even want to take it one step further and make a little tent for him. It's up to you. But I kind of want to have like a little fire like here. Kind of like, oh, that's the wrong way as well. You know what? I want it a little bit further back. Just a little bit further back. This is where the shovel comes in. I think it's a little bit faster than breaking with my hand. I'm not 100% certain on this. I don't, I don't know about that stuff. But it does seem a little bit faster than just smashing the blocks with my hand. And I just want to have like, uh, I just want to have a little bit of a fire here. So here, here, here and here, and a Neverack, and a flint and steel in the center. And what I also want to have, and oh, I'm gonna need to shovel some more stuff, just, just a little bit around here. And what I want to have surrounding the fire on the left and right hand side of it, and this is just a little bit further away, we just want to have like a, a jungle tree. Or at least I want the jungle tree, whether you guys want it or not, that's completely up to you, but I kind of want a jungle tree like here, and I also want one like here, and I'm just going to destroy the sand surrounding it. I can't remember what the, uh, I can't remember what you need to have. I can't remember the spacing you need to have for a tree, but I think it's like uh, all of the blocks surrounding the tree, like the three surrounding it, I think they have to be left alone. I think. Again, I, d I don't know. Um, I think that'd be cool if there was a couple of trees here. And surrounding the shark, something that I actually have in my original version, and we will take a look at it. I have some, because I do think I did it perfectly on the original version of my shark. I just have some trees, like, uh, just, just around. And these are just jungle trees. I mean, the idea, in my head, this is like... You're on an island. Whoops, I got stuck in the tree there. Like, you're on an island. You know what? That little story was actually going absolutely nowhere. But I do think that it definitely sets the scene a little bit more. I think it makes it look a little bit cooler if you do have some jungle trees with the pier, with the shock, with the fire. I think it makes it look that much more better. And that's the shot, guys. That's the inside and outside of it complete. But what I would like to show you is the original version of this. So that is the tutorial for this completed. There's nothing more to be done here. Let me show you the original version. This is my favorite view of my shark house. I think it really does set the scene. You're like submerged in the trees. You can see the shark coming out from the ocean. You're on like a little deserted island. There's a pier, there's a boat, there's a little campfire. I think it just looks amazing. So let's have a look at the shark. And by the way, I love the fact that you can see down into the shark from the outside. So we enter the shark, we come in through the mouth. There's nothing really in the head of the shark, the actual head of the shark. There's just a nice little bit of a fountain that's really cool. We have some scenic lights. We have some stairs that take us down into the belly of the shark. But something cool about the fountain, other than adding some light to the inside of the shark, it just, it lets you, it teases the bottom half of the shark. Once you see that, you kind of want to see what's going down there. You kind of want to see what's going down down there. You want to have a bit of a look. So we're just going to come down here. And I use pink glass on the original version. I think it looks quite nice. And you can see down here we have the same sofa. We have the same fountain. This time, oh wow, we forgot to add the glass. Um, Something that you can do around the top of the fountain is you can add glass coming down from it. And I, I don't know why, but in my head it kind of looks like shark jaws like two sets of teeth. I think it looks kind of cool, but I do think that also makes the fountain look a little bit cooler. It just adds another level and it also makes the place a little bit lighter, but you might also be able to notice that now the TV fits in with the fountain and uh, the bed also fits in everywhere and we also have like the little angler light as well and we have the TV. We Everything just, it, there's not that much down here when you think about it. There's not that much, but it is very, very cool down here. Very different, I think. I, I think that that's what I like about it the most. So we've pretty much seen everything within like a minute, but I do think that this is probably one of the coolest houses that I've ever made, just because I think that the inside is so amazing Look, Well, I just hope that you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, give it a favorite, give it a share, anything you'd feel like doing to help me out, I'd honestly really appreciate it. A lot of you suggested that I should make the tutorial for the inside and outside the shark and I hadn't even designed one when you requested it so I came up with this pretty quickly and honestly I think there's something absolutely it's probably the best work that I've ever done for the inside and outside of a house project honestly I, I love this to bits if you do like favorite share if you wouldn't mind subscribe if you haven't already we do loads of cool stuff like this on the channel comment down below let me know what you want to see next do you have another build in mind do you have like another another like weird build like this do you want me to build an octopus coming out from the ocean? Do you want me to build a bird flying in the sky, dropping an egg or something? I don't know. 
let me know what you want me to make. Very, very interested. Obviously, I'll give anything a go if I'll give this thing a go. Um, check out the card system. I'll only be leaving a link to the original shock head in there. So if you've skipped to the end of the video just to see what this would look like, you can find the tutorial in there and the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Like, favorite, share if you want my comment down below. Check out the card system. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.